Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog, also RichardDwyer.co. Let's discuss the George Floyd trial, which is underway. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I'm sure many criminal prosecutors would disagree with me. I also recognize that many people are very upset with this case and that many people view the case as open and shut. I believe some close family members involved in the case um, have said that this is a slam dunk, right? People are expecting a quick verdict. I can tell you too that most of my friends are very committed to Black Lives Matter and uh, they almost view this case as a racial litmus test, right? The idea is that George Floyd was clearly killed by the establishment and my friends at least want justice. Well, let me just say, uh, I understand this view is a view out there in the wilderness, but I don't get the case. I thought I did when I saw the video, the nine plus minutes of what looked to be George Floyd being strangled to death, right? I thought I understood it. Then I started looking into the evidence and uh, let's just say after looking at the evidence, I'm not even sure what's going on here. The prosecution doesn't make sense to me. And I say this after opening statements. The prosecution doesn't make sense to me. But what really makes no sense to me is the fact that while there's a huge public outcry, no one is looking at the facts of the case to question the basic premise of the case. Right? We all agree that if George Floyd were standing up and was getting arrested by the police. And then if he fell down, dead, that this would not be a case of murder. This would be a case of someone dying during an arrest. Right, can we agree on that? Isn't the basic premise of this case the idea that a police officer put his knee on George Floyd's neck and that that knee suffocated George Floyd. That knee was improper. It was excessive. George Floyd says, I can't breathe. George Floyd then starts pleading for his mother and then he expires. Aren't we assuming causation here? Isn't the idea that the cop suffocated George Floyd? Now YouTube, and I'm doing this as part of a YouTube video, allows for comments from listeners in the comment section of the video. If I have the basic premise of this case wrong. Please let me know. I've tried to discuss the case with several people and am still at a loss as to what's going on here. Right? So, what I want people to fully understand, and these are the facts of the case that should be mentioned <clears throat> is that an autopsy was done of George Floyd by Dr. Andrew Baker of the Hennepin County Medical Examiner's Office. An autopsy. And of course, 
his medical findings were that George Floyd did not have petechial hemorrhaging in his eyes. Quite frankly, there are no clear-cut medical signs that George Floyd died of suffocation. Right? Understand, there were no bruises. This is according to the autopsy. There were no bruises on George Floyd's neck. Understand, they actually peeled back the skin and muscles on his neck. And there were no bruising on George Floyd's muscles. Right, folks? George Floyd's airflow to win this case, doesn't the prosecution at a minimum need to prove to the jury beyond a reasonable doubt that George Floyd's airflow was restricted? Right? Don't they have to show some kind of suffocation of George Floyd? Folks, the autopsy, right, done by a doctor, the autopsy in the case, and pay attention to it when they mention it at trial, contains no evidence, no evidence that George Floyd's airflow was restricted. There's no finding that George Floyd was suffocated. None. Without that finding, how can anyone find the police officer guilty of murdering George Floyd? Let's go one step further. Let's back up a little bit. I want people to fully understand the nature of the evidence, and it's overwhelming. George Floyd goes into a store to buy a pack of cigarettes. He passes a bad bill, <clears throat> right? Maybe he knows that he is using counterfeit. Maybe he doesn't. But he passes a bad bill. Did you know that after Floyd leaves and he's in a car with other people, that's important here, with other people, folks from the store go out to the car and they ask George Floyd to pay for the cigarettes. Right? Think about it. He passes a bad bill. They don't call the police right away. Rather, they realize it's a bad bill. They go out into the parking lot and they tell him, hey, look, this is a bad bill. Please pay for the cigarettes. George Floyd doesn't. He refuses. That's what starts this whole thing. Now, the people in the car see him popping pills that they believe to be Percocet. Understand, the person from in the store who took the bill is going to testify that they believe George Floyd was under the influence of something, that he was acting erratically. You're going to find out that one of the people in the car was so concerned about George Floyd's erratic behavior that she actually called someone 
to pick her up. Right there in a car, someone thought, you know what, this guy's not in good shape. This is before a single cop shows up. Did you know that after the death, the police look through the car and the police have found pills in the car with George Floyd's saliva on them. By the way, the pills ended up being a mix of fentanyl and methamphetamines. Well, let me just say that the police show up and they take George Floyd from his car and they're walking George Floyd to the police car. This is witnessed by several people. Right? Several people are there now. Well, you know what happens. George Floyd refuses to get in the police car. A scuffle ensues. It's on film, folks. The car is shaking. There's a problem getting George Floyd in the car. At one point, George Floyd suffers a nose injury. Apparently, there's evidence in the police car that George Floyd's head hits part of the police car. So understand, folks, it's physical. George Floyd does not want to get in the police car. We know that. Right now, understand, if George Floyd gets in the police car, that's the end of the story. He doesn't die out on the street. If his death was caused by fentanyl, methamphetamines, he would have died in the police car. We wouldn't be calling this a murder case. Well, no, it's because George Floyd doesn't want to be in the police car. According to reports, he said, hey, I'm claustrophobic even though he was just in a different car. Right? George Floyd then ends up outside. And the officer, the defendant here, Derek Chauvin, reaches the conclusion that they need to subdue George Floyd. Now, let's talk about the knee. Understand their differences of opinion here. Some people claim that the knee is on his neck. Other people claim that the knee is on the shoulder blade. What's clear is that there is a protocol. This is right out the police manual. For a cop to subdue someone who's just been arrested by placing a knee on the shoulder blade of that individual. Now, at this trial, let's all pay close attention to the experts they put on the stand who will testify about whether or not Derek Chauvin employed the maneuver the proper way. Right? If Derek Chauvin doesn't, and you feel that he deliberately puts George Floyd down on the street and then is doing something other than proper police procedure in an effort to kill George Floyd, okay, then fine. A murder charge is proper. But if you have any doubts, any reasonable doubts, if you hear about the police procedure, then you look at the film and you have questions on whether Derek Chauvin is doing the procedure the correct way. 
You have questions about whether Derek Chauvin intended to do anything other than correctly follow the permitted police procedure. Then this is a case that warrants acquittal. Doesn't it? The autopsy does not show suffocation. The police maneuver might actually be a police maneuver approved by the police department. Not only that, to get to the stage where a police maneuver was necessary required George Floyd to refuse to get in the police car and to scuffle with police officers. So what gets my goat here is the fact that the press isn't doing a better job because no one wants to look asleep. Everyone wants to look woke. So the press right now is painting this case as cut and dry when it's anything but cut and dry. This isn't a slam dunk. In fact, quite frankly, this might be a block shot. The people expected to testify include the person in the store who received the counterfeit money, who then goes outside and tries to get George Floyd to pay. It's going to include people who were in the car with George Floyd, who, after he passes the bad bill, see him taking pills. Right? I would imagine it's going to include the doctor who did the autopsy, who will be able to tell us the reasons for George Floyd's death. Right? Understand, George Floyd appears to have had heart problems. Then he's using drugs right before he dies. Right? He's out on the street because he didn't want to be in the police car. Folks, cops at crime scenes have limited choices. They could either have you in the police car and take you to the station, or they have to subdue you and wait for backup. Also understand why the police are on the scene. They're on the scene because the store in which George Floyd passed a bad bill call the police. Right, the cops are there as part of their job. No one is profiling George Floyd, picking him out for harassment. So based on these facts, let me just ask a real simple question. Do you believe that you could reach a guilty verdict here beyond a reasonable doubt? No petechial hemorrhaging, according to the autopsy. I know there are many well-intentioned witnesses who saw what happened, right, who believe that George Floyd, after begging for his life, right, after saying, I can't breathe, which apparently he says before he's on the floor, was suffocated. But understand, folks, we actually have the autopsy. A medical doctor actually looked at George Floyd's body, looked at his skin, peeled back the skin, looked at the muscles under the skin, looked in his eyes for patricial hemorrhaging and found no evidence that Mr. Floyd's airflow was restricted. 
How do you get past that to a guilty verdict? I don't think you do. So let's all watch this trial. There are some weaknesses I want to hear from. The coroner, for example. Right? Um, but understand, George Floyd was acting erratically. According to people who were in the car with him. Before he ends up on the floor in the street. Believe it or not, too. As the cops are walking George Floyd from his car to their car. Right? And keep in mind what the evidence is. You have someone who says, George Floyd passed me this counterfeit bill. Right? So the evidence is heavy, certainly enough to arrest someone. Well, as the police are walking George Floyd to the police car, there's actually a civilian who's walking alongside them. Who's telling George Floyd, hey, you know, just get in the car. You can't win. Right? That's a civilian. That's not law enforcement. So there are witnesses here at every step of the way. And my argument to you is just a simple one. Without medical evidence that George Floyd was suffocated, how do you get a conviction here? Isn't this really more of a political event than an actual trial? Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.